Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Last year, documents were discovered that indicated that the federal government was considering establishing two new monuments, national monuments, here in the state of Utah, one at Cedar Mesa and one at the San Rafael Swell. Well, a couple of weeks ago, Congressman Rob Bishop met with the BLM, and they guaranteed him that the federal government the president had no intention of unilaterally creating new monuments in Utah without public input. Well, we thought this would be a good juncture to look at last time a monument came to the state of Utah. That was the Grand Staircase Escalante Monument, which crosses Kane and Garfield counties. And we thought we'd see what impact that 1.9 million acre impoundment has had on those two counties. Here with the story is Terry Wood. The local officials basically woke up one morning and found out that 1.9 million acres of their county was within the boundaries of the Grand Staircase National Monument. In 1996, then-President Bill Clinton stood on the rim of the Grand Canyon in Arizona and designated the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in Utah. The monument was designated under the Antiquities Act to protect the historic and natural surroundings of the area, which makes up over 80% of two Utah counties, Garfield and Kane. For the leaders of those two counties and some of the residents, the monument was designated not to protect artifacts they feel, but as a political maneuver that could cost local jobs. A planned coal mine run by Andalax Resources was approved by local and state government officials and passed an environmental impact statement. Locals argue the monument shut down the mine operation before it could begin, leaving southern Utah without the promised economic benefits. The uh, driving force of the creation of that monument was coal, and now it's all locked up. The president that created it under the Antiquities Act stated in his book, I created the monument to save the pristine area from the ravaging of coal mining, that tourism would be better for the economy. Tourism does not replace the economic benefits of mining coal. There are billions, billions of tons of high-grade, low-sulfur coal on that monument. There's trillions of cubic feet of natural gas, there's oil, and it's all locked up. It's just, uh, it was a, in my mind, a stab in the back by our president that, that has hurt our whole nation. With well over 80% of Kane and Garfield counties under federal ownership, another impact is the lack of private property from which the counties collect taxes and the cost of services the counties have to provide. We don't have anything for our tax base here, so we've got requirements to maintain access, safety, and the rest. And what happens generally is that the Congress will appropriate a meager amount of money for what they call PILT, payment in lieu of taxes, and it just hasn't brought that much for local revenue. So we get a chance to deal with all of the other issues, including law enforcement, but none of the benefits. While the counties feel the economic impact is undeniable, particularly in the case of resource development, the tourism afforded by the monument designation has had a big effect on their communities. However, it is their feeling that mining and tourism could have existed together. You can still visit those places and see beautiful stuff. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be locked up and put under glass. We could control the pristine value of the area, do controlled mining, and we could have as much or even more tourism. The challenges continue 15 years later. But there is one thing that has become clear to local and national leaders alike. The Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument is here to stay. We have got to figure out ways to make it work. And if tourism is the answer uh, to this, let's sit down at the table and talk about it. While there might be a couple of different perceived camps, uh, we're really all one community. We just need to kind of figure out how to communicate. And uh, you can talk about what was lost or what's changing or what the potentials were. But if you had to say, what's this potential? It's virtually unknown. And it, it changes us uh, culturally and socially at the same time. For the county seat, I'm Terry Wood. 
Terry tells me that Andalex actually could have continued to uh, operate within the monument because they had existing mineral rights at the time the monument was established. But they chose to leave the monument as a business decision because of the change in the environment and the way the land was to be managed. That sounds like a topic for another day here on the county seat. Well, stay with us. When we come back, we will be discussing the impact monuments have on counties and some of the alternatives in land use and planning that may possibly provide an alternative to uh, protecting lands such as monuments do. Stay with us. We'll be back with more of the county seat with our distinguished guests in just a minute. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. Fall in love with fall, Logan, Utah. It's time you got off the beaten path. It's time you discovered something new. It's time you explored Kane County, Utah. Thousands of miles of trails, shorelines that go on forever, a horizon that compels you forward. Spend some time in Kane County and visit the past, present, and future. Kane County, Utah, it'll be time well spent. What are the words that describe the perfect destination? Finding them all in one place is easy if you know where to look. Millard County in the heart of Utah offers ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and nature at its most epic. Millard County, Utah, find out what you've been searching for. 